we have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Then Jesus replied, Have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. He meant Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, who, though one of the twelve, would later betray him. I've read to you from the book of John, the sixth chapter, the sixtieth through the seventy-first verses. May the good Lord have blessed to the reading and hearing of his most holy and righteous word. Amen. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. This morning, most gracious heaven and heavenly Father, we come, dear Father, in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus. Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving on our hearts, realizing, dear Father, that you, the creator of heaven and earth, and all that is therein, that you know all things, Father. Sometimes we get concerned and worried about the things we see going on around us, Father. And sometimes we have a tendency to get overwhelmed. But Father, we look at you. Sometimes we don't think that man had good sense. But someone said that common sense isn't very common. And I... I didn't believe this, but I'm beginning to see it more and more. People don't exercise good sense anymore. When we were young, our parents taught us to use our heads to think about what you're doing. And we had a whole neighborhood watching out for us, informed on us whenever we did anything wrong. So we didn't get away with much. But Father, we thank you that we didn't turn out too bad. Thank you, oh, Heavenly Father, we look around at this world now, Father, and we say things to people, and they look at us with glassy eyes like they don't understand anything that we're saying. Oh, Heavenly Father, it's disheartening. So, Father, we ask that you would have your way, Father. You know all things, Father. We pray that you would touch this world, Father, but we stand in need. Yes. We need yes. you, dear Father. This whole world, Father, we look at the way things are going on. We see that the end times are upon us, dear Father. So we just ask, Father, for the strength to go on, dear Father, and to not lose heart, Father. For we know that you know all things, and nothing is going to take you by chance, dear Father, and nothing is going to happen that you don't allow, oh, Heavenly Father. So we know, dear Father, that according to your will and to your way, Father, things are going to turn out for the best, dear Father. So we pray that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven or heaven. Yes, yes. So we pray for peace on earth, dear Father, even though it don't seem like it's possible. But we know that through you, Father, all things are possible. Yes, Father. So we're yes. leaning and depending on you, oh heavenly Father. Yes, yes. But you, you, you've never, dear Father, disappointed us or let us down, dear Father. And you've always would stir when we needed you, oh heavenly Father. So we just... Pray that you would have your way, O oh Heavenly Father. So we ask, dear Father, that you would move all of our cares this morning, dear Father. That you, dear Father, would give us that peace of mind this morning as we go into worship this morning, dear Father. To worship you, dear Father. Thankful that you woke us this morning, Father. Clothing our right minds so we would be able to get out of our beds, Father, with a reasonable amount of strength and help, dear Father. And knowing that whatever comes tomorrow, dear Father, that you'll be with us, O oh so we thank you, Father, and we realize and we have told this every day that this world is not our home. We were not made to stay here forever, but that one day we're going to spend eternity with you, O Heavenly Father. But while we're here, Father, we ask that you would give us the strength, dear Father, to try to encourage one another, dear Father, to tell others that don't know you, Father, in the pardon of their sins, that we know a man who can deliver them. Oh, yeah. who will save them, Father, from an yeah. eternity, yeah. dear Father, of, of, of Him. Yeah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just so thankful this morning to be here, oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father, for the St. Matthew's Baptist Church family, dear Father. We ask your continued blessing upon each and every one, dear Father, for we all stand in need, Father. And you told us that we're to be a family, Father, that we're to help one another, dear Father. So help us to be all that you would have us to be, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, then we just pray for each and every church who's doing.
doors stand open in your son Jesus' name, dear Father. Proclaiming life to the lost and dying world. As we go further in this service, Father, we ask that you just have your will, Heavenly Father. We ask you to continue blessings upon our pastor, Father, as he comes in and out before us, Father, trying to teach us your word, dear Father. We ask that you just help us to open our minds and understand the things that you would help us to learn, dear Father, then help us to apply them to our lives, Father, that we will continue to grow better thereby, dear Father. As we go into this service, we just ask that you would have your way, Father, we'd be careful to give you all the praise and the glory. Father, these and all things rest in the blessed name of your Son, Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Guide me, O oh great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land.
who are leading those children to be able to lead them in the right direction. And then also, in addition to that, we have the Kong Festival, which is in October, but I'm saying this because I'm gonna keep reminding everybody that the sign-up sheet will go out September the 1st, or the first week of September, so that everybody in the church that belongs to St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church can sign up to meet and greet. We're gonna have like two hour slots, not very long. If you're a morning person, we ask that you sign up in the morning. If you're an afternoon person, sign up in the afternoon. But what our goal is is to let everybody know that who belongs in this blue, this blue tin church that everybody see come. Some people don't know that we belong here, or, or you know, it could be a friend. They never know who, who, who lives inside this church. So we asking that everybody. Just sign up if, if you want to sign up with your family, bring the kid. We want kids to be shopping. And definitely, as far as on the children, we want all youth. On Thursday night, that's one of the busiest nights to get two hours. We'll have them out there. So the Because I think it's bracelet night. That's the night all the kids come out. So we want them to see there are young youth children that is involved in church. So if they're not, you know, if they don't know anything about God or they don't hear much about it at home, they may see a familiar face and be interested. So all we're trying to do is basically bring more people from the outside and the inside. So we just ask that, again, we'll all continue to, you know, kind of notify everybody and when the sign-up sheet comes out. And we just, like I said, I'm asking that everybody's name, that we fill up the sheet. I know we can. It's not the maybe, what is it, three days, a half of a day and two full days that we fill that sheet up. And we come out and represent St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you. Six. And you type in SMMBC, the dollar sign, and the amount you wish to give and follow the instructions after that. Or you can come out of church. We have a secure mailbox right out front. You can drop it right in there. If you can't do any of those things, if you go on down a little lower, there are several deacons' names there with their phone numbers. You can arrange for them to pick it up for you, and we can receive it that way. With all that being said, I can turn it over to the hands of the ushers.
have done for each and every one of us, Father. We thank you for an opportunity, Father, that you have given us to give back to you, Father, because you have blessed us, Father God, with more than we need. And so, Father, we thank you. And we just pray, Lord, what we have received, Father. We will use it in the same manner in which it was given, and that is to help build your kingdom, Father God. And we want to thank you for each and every one that have given and those who had a desire to give, Father. We just pray that you will just continue to open doors and windows, Father God, that we will receive the blessings you have already in store for us. And we will use it, Father God, to glorify your holy and your righteous name. All these things we ask in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We here at St. Matthew's Missionary Baptist Church, we believe in the power of prayer. Yeah. Not only believe it, like the pastor always say, we know. Yeah. All right, we know, and we yeah, we know that God answers our prayers because we have seen it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Some of the individuals on a on a um, special prayer list list is Marcus Harris, Andrew Watson, Justin Howard, Barney Barnes, Jeannie McNack. Georgia Harjo, Miles Metcalf, Dennis Jackson and family, Roy Whiteside and family, Gay Talton and family, Emmy Perkins and family, Tremaine Thomas and family, Kim Stokely and family, Leroy and Linda Lovett, Jennifer Rice and family, Arthur and Osceola Dillingham, Eddie and Delores Hill, Brother Roosevelt Powell, Sister Willie Brown, Desiree Thurman, Delroy and Willie Jean Marklin, Emmett Asbury, Glenda Lewis Wallace, Jeremiah Richardson, Helen Figures, Herbert Lewis, Continuous Prayer for Steve Lewis, Stuart Delp, John Collins, Aretha Rice and family, Alberta Ben and family, continuous prayer for the St. Matthews Missionary Baptist Church family, Jeffrey Harris, Reverend Tommy Asbury, and always let's continue to pray for our pastor and his family, and I would ask for special prayer for me and my family as well, amen? Amen. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and merciful Father God who art in heaven, once again on this Sunday, that was not promised to any of us. We want to thank you, Father God, that you allowed us to come together collectively to praise and worship your holy and righteous name. Father, we want to thank you, as always, for the thread of clothes on our back. We would thank you, Father God, for the nourishment that is in our stomach. We would thank you, Father God, for the wind that soothes our skin. We would thank you, Father God, for the breath that is in our lungs. But I would be remiss if I didn't thank you for the greatest gift of all. And that was when you allowed your son, Jesus, to come to this sin sick world, Father God, to take upon the sins of the world. And Father, we, we know that because of his act, and because of your power that he rose from the dead and sits on the right hand side, we can come boldly but humbly to your throne room asking for prayer. Not because we deserve it, Father God, because our king who sits on the right side of you makes it possible for us just to stand before you this day. Lord, you can just tell about him. By the prayer list, Father God, there are people, your children, that are in need of special prayer. Yes. I need not to be specific, because you are all-knowing God. Yes. You already know. And Father, we know by your scripture, you said that you can just speak and things can be done. So Father, we come in the name of Jesus asking that you touch each up one of these individuals, Father God. There are people that in the hospital we ask for special prayer. There's people in nursing homes right now, Father God, we ask for special prayer. There's homeless individuals, Lord, living up under bridges. We want to pray for them as well. Father, there's a mother out there that's brokenhearted because she may have a child that may be incarcerated in prison right now, Father God. So we ask that you just comfort them right now. Be with them on this day. Whatever we're going through, Lord, we know that you are capable and willing to answer our prayer. But Lord, we come right now in the name of Jesus asking that. Just give us a little strength to put all of our cares aside just for a little while. And give us the strength to raise our high eyes up and look upon the heavens and just praise and worship your holy name. Because you are worthy to be praised. Father, you see fit not to answer any of our prayers. You've done enough. You've done enough when you allowed your son Jesus to die on the cross and gave us hope for a brighter tomorrow. So we will ride on that, Father God, on that hope, that confident expectation that one day, through all the pain and the suffering and all the things that we go through, that we will one day walk through the streets of gold with no more suffering and no more pain, and we will be with you forever. And we will hold on to that, Father God, until that time. So we thank you. We give you all the honor and glory. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen.
See, religion won't save you. And, and see, they were, there were many religious people back in the day in the Old Testament and they were worshiping idols, worship themselves, and so on, and whatever. And so God's goal, once again, is to reconcile mankind back to himself with a personal relationship. So we're going to talk about biblical administration, uh, because everything that God does is in decent and, and in order. And, and we want to serve here at St. Matthew Baptist Church with a purpose. Right. Yeah. Amen. 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 We want to do ministry with a purpose. Amen. And therefore, uh, it takes finances yeah. Yeah. All right. to help build God's kingdom. So I'm going to talk about today dealing with biblical administration and the title or the subject of the sermon today is going to be Why Christians Should Pay Tithes. Why Christians Should Pay Tithes. And before I get started, you know, God blessed us uh, at the old church. In this case, nobody don't remember. But the Lord had given us a vision to build God's kingdom. And he blessed us. It wasn't but a handful of us. And he, he uh, told us, number one, to do ministry. And that's what we did. And the church just exploded. I mean, it exploded. And, 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 and so we ran out of room, right? And my fact, we ran out of room, plus the building was decayed. You know, I, I, sometimes I would get a little happy. But I, I learned where to walk. I had to find the floor jokes. They thought I was up there dancing. But God blessed us. And he told us that, you know, he's going to bless us with another facility as part of the solution of the overflow. And, 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 and he told us that he was going to do it Without us selling anything, come on, no cake pies, chilling dinners, pig feet, no bunch of programs to raise money. That he would do it through tithing and all. Y'all remember that? And he blessed us with, with a nice facility. And then he blessed us to pay it off yeah. in a short period of time. So we know there was nobody but who? Mm. And God does not change. Why Christians should pay tithes? Let's go to the book of Malachi. Chapter 3. Beginning with verse 10. That's Malachi chapter 3, beginning with verse 10. God giving his instructions here. He says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may meet in my house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. What caught my attention in this text? He says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may meet in my house. In other words, that I can operate in my house, in the church. 
And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts. Now, now notice this. He says, if, if I will not open you the windows of heaven. Now, I learned that in a house, there are more windows than there are doors. But he didn't say doors, did he? He said, windows of heaven. Then he says, and pour you out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. In other words, he'll just keep blessing when you do what he tells you to do. That's why I understood that. Okay, now, every other organization in this world God's institutions, such as the tabernacle, the temple, and today's church, need money or finances to operate. Your job need money. Your household need money. Every organization, it takes what? To operate. It has expenses, such as mortgage, utilities, payroll, benevolence, Maintenance, which is the upkeep. Y'all, you know, let this air condition go out. Come on. Let's keep it real. It probably wouldn't be but a few of us in here. <laughs> Especially with these temperatures. Come on, y'all. Most important, to help build the kingdom of God by spreading the gospel to reconcile mankind back to God. That's what's most important. Yeah. It takes money. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, ministries and God <clears throat> has always expect for his institution to be self-supported through his members giving back to God a tithing and an offering of their income uh, to the local church. In other words, to your church family. The word tithe is an old English word meaning to give 10% of one's income. 10% of one's income. And that's really not a, a great requirement, really, when you really think about it. And I'm going to show you here as we go through the Old Testament, deal with how God had dealt with the Israelites during that time, uh, that dispensation. But when you think about 10%, that's not really a whole lot of requirement. If you had $100 for the week or the month, God just asked you for $10. Yeah. All right. And you got 90% to do whatever you want to do. $10. Is that too much to ask? No, no sir. It could have been the other way around. <laughs> Come on. Therefore, God began to teach his people how he wanted them to support his kingdom. And that is through tithing and offering. And now, uh, Brother John, he got up and spoke a while back dealing with this. Now, let me make something clear. You hardly ever heard me preaching on finances. All right. If you keep it honest. Huh? You never hear me getting up begging nobody for no money. Because I've learned that, that wherever God leads you, he's going to what? He's going to provide. Let me clear the road. Amen. So God began to teach his people how he wanted them to support his kingdom. And that is through tithing and offering. And keep this in mind as well. <clears throat> When God asks us to do something, it is for our benefit, not his. Keep that in mind. One of the things that God wanted to do was to help them to be able to learn how to give. Let's move on. Keep that. Underscore that. Despite the obvious blessing that come to those who obey God's tithing command, some Christians still have a question. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Was the idea of tithing an invention of Moses? Was it done away with 
when Jesus came on the scene? Was it just for the physical nation of Israel, a form of taxation? Should Christians give tithing to their church? There are people right today who are Christians still in their mind trying to figure out how to support God's kingdom. Well, hopefully today you'll get a clear picture, a biblical clear picture on how God expects us to support his kingdom. Let's first of all start how you get started, how the tithing get started. Long before the law of Moses, Abraham gave a tithe to Melchizedek. The high priest of God as Satan. God had delivered his enemy into his hands. Abraham was so grateful, underscore that. Yeah. He was so grateful for what God had done for him that he gladly gave back a tithe, which is 10% of his proceeds. Yeah. See, God had blessed him in a military act. And he shouldn't have never won with the few men he had. Right. But see, when you got, but but the scripture says, but when God was with him. Whenever you see that in the scripture, yeah. God was with him. That means something. Yeah. And so he won, and, and he, had, he had received all the spoils from the enemy. Mm -hmm. And he was so excited about what God had done for him that he, he notice what it said, he gladly yeah. gave back to the Lord. And when you when you use the phrase gave back, that means it didn't belong to you in the first place. In Genesis 14, 20, notice what it said. And, and, and blessed be God most high. Notice this, what he said. Who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. You hear folk talking about how they love the Lord. Yeah. The Lord been good to me. Oh, if it wasn't for the Lord, where would I be? You know, I asked the Lord to help me with this. Excited. I can't help it. Because see, when I think about 
Right. See, and I ain't talking about nobody else. But when I think about what the Lord has done for me, when I think about what the Lord has brought me from, when I think about, see, this is personal. See, I used to have friends say, why are you always going to Bible study? Why are you always doing this? Why are you always Oh, if you only knew. Come on. If you only knew. Why are you, why are you up there giving this money to people you know they ain't going to do right? If you only knew. <laughs> Jacob said, fill it all. I was excited. How inspired is this place is. See, when you come into the house of the Lord and the Spirit of God is moving, how can you just sit there and look? All right. Yeah. Half sleep. <laughs> Watch your phone. When God's presence is in the place, you ought to be excited about this God you serve. This ain't just no ordinary God. This ain't a God you carry around in your pocket. You set up on your shelf. If you only knew. Yeah. Notice what he said. Certainly. Yeah. This is the house of God and the gateway to heaven. See, when he was in that in that vision state, and, and he saw that stairway going from the earth to heaven and people going climbing. Oh my goodness, knowing that one of these days he's going to make that same route, but he won't be using a stairway. Right, right. I don't think y'all know what I'm talking about. Come on. He says, certainly, yes. this is the house. This is where I get my information. This is where I praise the Lord. These are all the things I do in the service of the Lord yeah. to build his kingdom. Yeah. He said, this is the house of God and the gateway to heaven. And in Genesis 28, 22, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, he said, I'll give them. Y'all help me out this morning. I'll give them what you're scared to say. Oh, I can understand if you're not doing it. He said, I will give a tip. You know why he said that? Because he appreciates. See, when you appreciate something or you appreciate somebody, you'll do something about it. See, love in itself is action. That's why the Bible said, for God so loved the world that he what? Yeah. He gave. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't just give anything. Yeah. His only begotten son. Yeah. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, when you talk about love, love is action. Yeah. Some of these guys can whisper in young ladies' ears and tell you to... <laughs> Oh, that's good talk. Some of them good at it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Deborah. Let me get back to my text. God, by the power of the Spirit, moved on these men to give a tithe a, a of their possession to show their appreciation to God for what? Blessing them. All right. Therefore, tithing became a show of obedience and a way of financial support for the tabernacle, the temple, and later the church. Right. It wasn't that God himself need financial support. Right. See, God, he already owned everything. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to what he said in the psalm. The, the psalm that said, uh, 50, 10, for every animal of the forest is mine, yeah. and the cattle on a thousand hills. Yeah. Another term is mine. Mm -hmm. And then Psalm 52 said, If I were hungry, would I not tell you? For the world is mine. Yeah. And all that is in it, yeah. in other words, is mine. Yeah. I don't need you to give me nothing. God owns everything. Yeah. You see, 
God set that up to help us and to teach us how to give because it, it, it's a blessing to give. And it is one of the greatest joy that you can experience is when you are able to help somebody else. See, you, you, you'll never be able to experience the joy from the deepest of your heart until you are able to help somebody else that's in need. And when you are able to help somebody else, you realize that God has helped you. So giving and helping becomes a joy. Let me move on. At Mount Sinai, Moses gave instructions in the books of Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy uh, regarding tithing. There were three basic things given for the support of the tabernacle and the temple ministry. Number one, there was what is called an annual tithe for the support of the Levites, the priests, the tabernacle workers. This was the only visible means of support for them since they inherited no land when Canaan was conquered under Joshua, Numbers 18 and 23. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility for the offense against it. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. They will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I will give to the Le Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. That is why I said concerning them, they will have no inheritance among Israel. So God will use the tithing to pay, to pay the, the, the leadership of the church, the preacher. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Now, I told you, I'm not going to beg for no money. But, but, but there's a responsibility. God has set up that you ought to take care of your pastor. Because he shared the word of God with you. And, and, and one thing that, 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 that the church needs to understand, and I'm not just talking about me as the pastor of St. Matthew Baptist Church, the pastor has a 7, 24 hour responsibility. Or call 2 o'clock in the morning. And, and the pastor had to get up out of his bed and go see what's going on. Yeah. Leave family and everything. And, and he can't say, well, I'll send the deacon because some folk can't go vote for that. Oh, don't be saying no nigga, you call. I want you to come. Well, why y'all talking about giving pastor a raise for him? Uh, well, y'all already got it. Well, I better get back to the oh. Pastor Rice. Oh. Right now, I'm not getting it. Hospital. Tulsa. Understand that pastors have such a great responsibility and they're humans just like everybody else. See, they get discouraged. Sometimes people say things to hurt their feelings. <laughs> Tell their wife stuff, kids stuff. They, they, know how to do it. they know how to do it, they know how to get it back to you. And I used to say this all the time if you got something. Uh, you need to talk to me about that door always open. And if you heard me, heard about me saying something or something, such, 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 talk to me. Don't go talk to nobody else. Talk to me. Yeah, Pastor, did you say something? And I, and I even say, yeah. <laughs> oh, I said, no, but I didn't say it. Come on now, we all adults. We Christian folk. Come on. Let me help y'all out. I'm gonna share something with you. Help. Pastor response. I'm probably gonna get cringe. I have folks, we used to stand at the door back there. 
and shake people's hand as they come through. I have folk get back with me and they go to the other swing I keep from shaking my hand. What am I done? Then I have some do this and walk straight by me and roll that. <laughs> Yeah, I catch him walking. I catch him. <laughs> but, but listen, it's a great responsibility. And, and Lord's will, when I, when, when I get up out of here, y'all remember that. Make sure you take care of your next pastor, all right? And I ain't, I ain't complaining, because y'all done a great job. Amen. I'm blessed. Amen. Don't get me wrong, but I've seen a lot worse. I sure have. And, 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 and I've seen some bad pastors, too, yeah. that run a dictatorship yeah. congregation. So let me move on from that. <laughs> Number two, social ministry. Tithe. Now, see, this is the second time here. This was, this was, they had a whole bunch of tithing and giving back then. You ought to be thankful you do it 10% and off. Listen, social. Receive every third year for helping the poor and the needy. Called benevolence. Deuteronomy 14, 20. At the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your town so that the Levites who have no allotment or inheritance of their own, and the aliens, and the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied, and so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. <laughs> what that sound like? Community outreach. Oh, it's a guy quiet, huh? Wait a minute, let me back up here. Notice this, y'all. Pay attention. Okay, he says, so the Levites, those are the leaders again, have no allotment in her, so take care of them. And the aliens, strangers. Okay, the fatherless. Families are neglected. The widows who live in your towns may come and eat and be satisfied. That sounds like a pantry to me. That sounds like community outreach to me. And so that the Lord your God may bless who? You. For doing ministry. It takes what? Money! It takes money. It takes money. Let me move on. I did get Quiet now. No. 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 Then there was a feast time, which apparently went for the support of the temple house of God in its services, recorded in Malachi 3, 6, and 12. This became the financial guideline for supporting the church expenses the ministry of tithes and offering. God did not say that Israelites was robbing the priest, but robbing God. Uh-oh. Now listen to this. The Israelite had neglected to support the temple with their tithes and offering. At one point, they was taking their tithes and using it for their personal monetary pleasures. Well, not not St. Matthew. I'm talking about... <laughs> Therefore, God charged them with robbery. Boy, that's a, that's a heck of a case, ain't it? You rob somebody, you go straight. It's different than stealing, ain't it? Uh, I heard a friend preach one time, and he called his name Turpin. I'm going to use that phrase. St. Matthew Hold Up. St. Matthew Hold Up. There are folk in this church that's robbing God. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. 
Robin. Oh. Oh. Oh, Lord, help me. Now, what are they doing with it? What, let's see. What are they doing with it? Check this out. They were taking what they should have been giving to the Lord. And doing whatever they wanted to do. And now this is God's money. All of it. Not just 10%. 100% is God's money. Come on, y'all. So therefore, God charged them with robbery. Because everything they own. Houses, cattle, their land, their crops, their clothes, their good health. Jobs, cars, trucks, bank accounts, cell phones. All belong to God. Everything belongs to God. And yet God only commanded 10% and they was allowed to keep 90% and yet they lost focus and took what did not belong to them and spread it out everywhere else. Come on, preacher. All right. That's a terrible shame to rob God. As good as God been to you. Oh, the Lord show me good to me. I got a check in the mail and I didn't even know. Mm -mm. Notice what it says. Anytime you don't do what the Lord commands you to do, you're being disobedient. Okay, now I'm almost done now. Some Christians attempt to rationalize when it comes to how and where God wants them to give their tithes, their 10%. Now, let me explain something to you, St. Matthew. Your work in the church is not your tithe. That's your gift that God has also gave you yeah. to use yeah. to build his kingdom. Okay? Giving to the needy in the streets is not your time right. and offering. God has blessed you to bless others. Yeah. Come on. Right. You know, and I'm not bragging on myself, but there are many times the Lord will send people to me, yeah. not to the church, but yeah. to me. Yeah. And I go in my wallet Amen. and give them what they need. Yeah. Now, and I still pay my tax. Yeah. I don't say, well, that's my tax. Right. No, it don't work like that. Right. Right. You see, you can't substitute anything else for your tax. Right. Helping others and doing all these things, that's because God has blessed you to do so. All right. Is this picture being painted? Yeah. Yeah. See, your tithing belong to your local church family. Yeah. Your tithing and your offering. And you pay your 10% as a tithing, and then anything you give after that to the church is considered an offering. Yeah. Right. I think Brother Deacon John made that very clear a couple weeks ago. Now keep in mind what the scriptures say, Matthew 3, 10, 8. He said, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Don't go giving your tithe to other folk. On the street, you bring your tithe here and then give them your cash out your pocket. Yeah. He says, so that it be what? Food in my house. Otherwise, we can take your business, the administration of the church. Now, notice verse 10 and B, and we get ready to close this out. He says, check this out. Test me in this. Now, this is the only place I found in Scripture. Well, the Lord said, test me. All right. Yeah. He said, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. Now, notice what he said. And see if I will not throw open the floodgates. Notice what he's saying. Test me. You pay your tithes. You give your offering. You, you know, test me. And see what I'll do. All right. Yeah. He said, and notice what he said. He said, I'll open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. 
You can't be God given. And let me tell you something. God owns everything. God opened doors and he shut doors. And God can give you blessings and he can cut your blessings. Let me close. God promises blessings. That's a promise. And if you know God, he don't never go back on his promise. Now your family, your friends, they'll give you a promise. They say they're going to do something. Or they say they're going to give you something. <laughs> Uh, well, something came up. I had to use that. It's yours. But God tell you something. It's a done deal, right? Amen. So this verse is a promise that God will bless those who faithfully tithe. But this does not say that God does not bless those who don't. Listen. Because of his unconditional sacrificial love for mankind. He also, listen now, he also allows Satan to give monetary wealth to people who don't even serve him. All right. That's how good God is. Boy, don't we serve an awesome God? Now, you don't do nothing for the Lord, don't worship, don't have nothing to do, but yet he'll allow Satan to bless you, Monterey. All right. Well, you say, well, Satan, why Satan? Mm -hmm. Well, don't you know that God allows Satan to own this world? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? When he tempted Jesus, yeah. he said, I'll give you yeah. everything. You go up here and worship me, I'll give you this, I'll give you that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So, so some folk are millionaires and billionaires are just as evil as they can be. And they got it in an evil way. But yet they got it. So just because you got wealth, that don't mean it came from, from the Lord. Listen to Matthew 5 and 44. It said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil. And the good. And he says, rain on the righteous? Yeah. Ain't God good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How in the world can you sit there and not be obedient to the Lord when the Lord been that good to you? Yeah. He blessed Abraham financially. Abraham had <clears throat> become every very wealthy in livestock and in silver and in gold. God blessed Jacob financially. Just 31 and 1. Jacob heard that Laban's sons was uh, saying Jacob has taken everything our father owned and has gained all his wealth yeah. from what belonged our father. And Jacob noticed that Laban's attitude toward him was not what it had been because the Lord was with Jacob. Yeah. See, when the Lord is with you. Yeah. Woo, yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. And when the Lord is with you, he's going to always take care of you. Yeah. Amen. Notice in Malachi 3 and 11. Now notice what Malachi says. Then for your sake I will stop insects from eating your crops. They will not destroy to produce of your land. The vines in your fields will not lose their unripened grapes, says the Lord. But everybody else look down around them. Woo! Hallelujah! I don't think y'all know what I'm talking about. Now, if we disobey God, I'm almost done. If we disobey God, I want you to get this. It's important. Hey, God, I want to find what we said. Now, this is what the Lord only says. Carefully consider your ways. You planted a lot, but you harvest little. You eat, but you're never full. You drink, but you're still thirsty. You wear clothing, but you never have enough to keep you warm. You spend money as fast as you earn it. This is what the Lord of the Army says. Carefully consider your ways. See, when you disobey God, I don't care how much money you got, how much money you got, three or four jobs. 
And every is all what what in, in, the, in the same context of this, it, it said as if though you had holes in your pocket. Yeah. Yeah. See, I had to learn how to deal with my enemies who financially mistreats me. <laughs> Pray for them. Let God deal with them. See, I've learned that when you turn them over to the Lord, let the Lord have to deal with them. It don't make no difference how much money they make. It's going to leave them. Like the writer said, it's like holes in your pocket. As you put it in there, and then somebody else picking it back up. And one thing you've got to understand that, 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 that obedience goes both ways. Let me move on. Let me, let me finish. Oh, before I go to the next point, it pays to be obedient to the Lord. And don't say you can't do it. God will never tell you to do something that you can't do it. And if you, and if you feel like you can't do it, it's not because of God. It's because you're not managing what God has given you. Come on. In the book of Proverbs, God reinforces his promise. He said, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first and the best part of your income. Then your barns will be full and your vats will overflow with fresh wine. It seems, it seems hard for some Christians to trust God at, the, at his word and tithe. Therefore, most Christians don't get to experience the Lord's financial blessings. <clears throat> Proverbs 11, 24 says, One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Real quickly. I had to learn that as a baby Christian. I'd give an offering and I considered it my tithes. I don't remember back in the day. All right. I had, I, I'm just keeping honest with you. Sometimes I'd be like the hypocrites. I'll put a dollar in there, but if I got a five dollar bill, I'll hold it. <laughs> but then drop it in. <laughs> Still ain't done nothing. <laughs> ain't done nothing. It could have been a hundred dollar bill. Still ain't done nothing because I wasn't paying my tithe. Y'all catch it? Pay your tithes. Notice this. When I start paying my tithe, the Lord start blessing me. And you know what else? Now, he had to teach me how to manage. Come on. All right. And, 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 and he taught me how to manage so that I can pay my tithes. Because in my mind, the devil was telling me, you can't afford to pay, pay them tithes, boy. But then I learned I can't afford not to. And I used to wonder why. My previous job, I was always laid off every year, two, sometimes two or three times a year. You know, well, around Christmas, you know that I had a kid. Oh goodness, <laughs> we knew it was coming, and I had sitting up putting it back. <laughs> Mismanagement. Come on. Then I heard a sermon, kind of like this one. And I said, man, all this go together. Obedience. You got to obey the Lord. You got to pay your tithe. You can't pay your tithe and be disobedient. Pay your tithe and go act a fool. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to keep it real with y'all as I close. So you're going to pay your tithe, but then you're going to go act up. Well, you just discounted that. And I'll show you in the scripture when I close with the last scripture. You got to do both. You got to be obedient. Then you got to manage. See, it ain't how much you make, it's how you manage it. So if you're managing your money, then you can afford to pay your tithes. And then when you pay your tithe, what God has said, then he will bless you financially because he cannot go back on his promise. Come on. Now, is tithing for the church? It's tithing for the church today. Y'all yeah, yeah. quiet. I knew the 
this wasn't going to be no popular sermon. I don't care. I don't preach for popularity. We going to start working and doing ministry. There are people hurting outside. There are people suffering. And there are children that 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 suffering and 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 and, and they they having to do things as if they were grown. They're cooking at, at six years old and cooking and trying to wash their clothes and things like that. This shouldn't be. Because people are out there suffering. And here we are. God has so-called blessed us. The Lord been good to me. Well, he's good to you. Let's do something. It takes money, though. Do you know that Jesus is the answer? We have people out here that's, that's struggling and doing things. They ain't got no business doing. The devil got them this. The devil got them that. Don't you know that there's... There's power in the name of Jesus. And that God, in the name of Jesus, can deliver these people. Do you believe that? It's time to do ministry. Let me, let me, let me, let me move on. It's time for the church today. Do you believe that? In speaking to the scribes and Pharisees, who often made self-righteous display of strictly keeping some of the smaller points of God's law, this is what Jesus said. This is the last scripture. Matthew 23 and 20. He says, now he's talking to these Pharisees and these scribes. Now, these were religious leaders. Yeah. They was considered the monkey yeah. monk of the religious order. And they had wealth. Okay. Notice what he says. You hypocrites. First of all, he called them what? Hypocrite. Hypocrite. And a hypocrite is what? A pretender. Yeah. They put on an act. Yeah. See, and what the, that's the worst thing. See, don't put on no act. Be who you are. Be yeah. who you are. Yeah. Be what you are. You ain't got to put on. Yeah. I, you know, I'd rather deal with you like you is. I don't care how bad you look. Yeah. <laughs> Come, I don't like surprises. <laughs> come on now. Yeah. If that's the way, if you're a thief, <laughs> well, just come on, y'all. I'm a thief preacher. Yeah. Well, the Lord can help you. Yeah. But don't lie and say you ain't no thief and then steal from me. Yeah. I still love you, though. Y'all got that? Yeah. Okay, he said, notice what he said about him. He said, you give God one-tenth of your mint deal and come but you have neglected justice, mercy, mercy. and faithfulness. Mercy. Other words, you think it's just by giving your tithe that you can go and do whatever else you want to do. All right. Now, know what he said. These are the most important things in Moses' teaching. He talking about the latter. Yeah. Come on, obedience to him. Do right, live right. Yeah. Integrity. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He said, this is what's most important. You can't pay your way to heaven. Right. Now, know what he said. Check this out. He said, you should have done these things without neglecting the others. You blind guys. You strain nets out of your wine, but you swallow camels. Oh. Well, Jesus lost me. Jesus, Jesus. Ooh, got me sweating. Jesus didn't play around. No, no y'all listen. There's a lot more than in there, too. He said, he's, check what he said. He said, you, have, you should have done these things without neglecting the others. Then he said, there's some people Jesus didn't get mad. See, now that's the explanation mark behind that. Yeah. Yeah. You blind guys. Come on. You strain nets out of your wine. <coughs> but you swallow cows. <coughs> oh my goodness. You you setting up here worried about the little old bitty thing. Come on with it. And yet you neglect the most important thing. Yeah. 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 Y
Come on now. Check this out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Jesus told him one time, he said, about them judging people. He said, in order for you to judge somebody, he said, first get that speck out of your own eye so that you can see clearly and get that law. Oh, come on, come on. Out of somebody else. <laughs> Jesus had a way of putting things, didn't he? Now, now, now you up here judging this person about a little old bitty situation and, and down and them talking about them. But then you got a big old log in your eye. And, and all he's saying is, first, get that, get your house in order first. Sweep around your own back door. Clean up first. Come on. That way you can help somebody else. How you gonna help? Now, why would I let you take some tweezers <laughs> and get a hair out of my eye when you got a big old splinter <laughs> aggravating you <laughs> in your eye and two cataracts? <laughs> I'm trying to help you. And you messing with the most sensitive thing in my body. Y'all get it? God works through people to build his kingdom. And once again, people are suffering. And God has called us. He has separated us and blessed us with gifts and talents and resources to help other people. Because the main thing that God wants is to reconcile mankind back to himself so that when he comes back or when you go, mm -hmm. you'll spend eternity yes. with God in heaven. This is what it's all about. Because mm -hmm. I told the class this morning and, and the other class, see, all this is getting ready to end, yeah. whether you want to yeah. accept it or not. Yeah. Yeah. Watch the news. Yeah. Read your Bible, book of Revelation, book of Daniel, and watch your news. Yeah. Everything yeah. is being put in place. Yeah. For this earth, this world to be destroyed as the Bible recorded. Yeah. So God is trying to get as many souls to go to heaven and spend eternity with him. And the devil is trying to get as many souls to spend eternity with him in hell. It's just simply put. So you better get on course. Now, Jesus don't have to come back in order for you to go. See, death is your stairway either up or down. And this is serious. And I'm giving you a warning. And one of these days when this old preacher is gone, you're going to say, well, the preacher said. I remember the preacher preached. Yes, you're right. But yet you left behind. Now, it don't have to be that way. You can get your ticket for the first bus. Yeah. Yeah. And that's called the rapture. Yeah. And you won't have to go through all that mess. And you'll be in paradise. Yeah. The Bible said to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So it's up to you. You have a choice. Well, how do I do that, preacher? How do I do that? Well, the Bible is very clear. It says that thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in that heart that God has raised him from the dead. The Bible said, thou shall be saved. And that's a personal relationship. And all you have to do is be sincere. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried for your sins, and he rose for your sins. And, and, and God has promised to save you. And you know what? In one particular passage of scripture, uh, it says, even those who call, on his name shall be saved. Because yes. see, God knows our heart. He knows when we, we really sincere. And if you sincerely call on him, 
to save you, he'll do it. Yeah. Now, when I say God knows your heart, he do. He really knows it. Yeah. You hear people say, well, the Lord knows my heart, especially when they be lying. Yeah. 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 They'll say that, oh, but the Lord, yeah, he really do. He know you're lying, too, and I know, too. Yeah. But the point is, God knows everything. And if you humbly say, Lord, save me right now. I believe Jesus died. I believe he was buried from my sins. And I believe he was resurrected. Say, you know what? You'll be saved. And the Holy Spirit will come and live in you. And he'll indwell you. And he will empower you to live the Christian life. You can't do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. Now, don't, don't accept religion, y'all. We was religious, raised up religious. We got water baptized and all that, but that don't mean you're saved. Come on. You end up being left behind because religion can't save you. Huh? There's a lot of religious people in churches today. They did a deal one time. They said about 35 to 40% of congregations are religious and don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. They were taught to go to church and it was like a ritual. Yeah. It's something that you do. But they never experienced a personal relationship. Well, when the trumpet sound and you left behind, then you're going to know that you were religious. I wouldn't want that because it's going to be a terrible time. But you can take care of that right now. All you have to do is accept Christ as your Lord and Savior right now. If you're listening to me right now, social media, you can bow your heads and say, Lord, I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he was buried. I believe he was resurrected for me. Come into my heart and save me. And he'll do it. Or if you're here today and you want to come forward and give your life to the Lord, you can come forward. Or you can do it right where you stand. What's important is that you do it. Yeah. That's what's important. Or perhaps you're here and you're looking for a church family, a church home. Every Christian should have a church home where they can use their gifts and talents to build God's kingdom. Because only what you do for the Lord is going to last. Everything else is going to burn up. If you're looking for a church home, a church family, we would love to have you at St. Matthew. Amen. We would love to have you. If not, this is first this is first Sunday and we have communion on first Sunday. We have communion on first Sunday. And uh, you don't have to be a member uh, of our church. <clears throat> we celebrate what is called open communion. And that means that if you're a born again Christian and you have a personal relationship with the Lord, <clears throat> you have every right to partake of the Lord's Supper. That's why the scripture said, let an individual examine himself to whether he eat of this bread and drink of this cup. But let us keep in mind that the Lord's Supper is sacred. It's symbolic, but it's sacred. God takes it very serious. And we all should, every day we should ask the Lord for forgiveness for anything that we have done. Every day. So that when Sunday comes for us to take the Lord's Supper, be nothing that will hinder us from partaking in the Lord's Supper. Amen. Now, if you take the Lord's Supper in an unworthy way, then that can be dangerous. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul talks about some, they, they, they sick, and then he talks about some of them going to sleep. Because they was abusing the Lord's Supper. Yep. Back in the church of Corinth, it was a very pagan church. And there were people coming into the congregation and been partying all night. Come in there and they took the wine. and See, they served real wine back then. <laughs> and they'd take the wine and turn the bottle up, tap a piece of the bread and eat off of it. Y'all know them kind of characters. And God did it with it. God takes this very serious. So when you eat of the bread and you, and, you, and you drink of the cup, remember what the Lord did for us. The Bible said while we were yet sinners, Christ died for who? For 
us, not himself. He didn't need to die for himself. He died for us. And there's nothing that we have done or could do that forgiveness won't cover. We always remember that. But don't try to take advantage of God's grace and mercy. Of their disciplinary actions. He will deal with you. You don't want that. said, as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you do remember the Lord's death till he comes again. And he will come again. That's a guarantee. Watch the news. Read your Bible. The signs are all around us. And it ought to encourage us it ought to encourage us to do ministry, outreach ministry. And let me, let me say this. <clears throat> we have inward ministry and we have outward ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. So let's serve with a purpose. Amen? Amen. And remember this. The main thing that God does since Adam and Eve is to use mankind to help reconcile Mankind back to himself. Everything we do is tied to that. I don't care what you do in this life, it's all tied to reconciling mankind back to God so that we can get up out of here. Amen? Amen. Y'all want me to sing, start singing? I saw my wife is shipping down. Shall? Let us all sing together. Uh -huh. 